Hello and welcome to Fun Fact Friday. Today we're going to talk about Russell's Paradox. Before we can talk about Russell's Paradox, we have to go all the way back to Aristotle and understand something called the Law of Excluded Middle. If you think about certain kinds of statements, like 10 is greater than 3, or 2 is the only even prime, or any day that ends in Y is a great day for mathematics, these statements can either be true or false. There's no middle ground. That's the law of excluded middle. The earliest formulation we have of the law of excluded middle comes from Aristotle about 350 BC. Aristotle states that it's not possible to be something and also not be that thing. This idea was so fundamental that it was accepted as just a law of thought for centuries. Now let's talk about sets. Sets are a fundamental concept in mathematics. They're usually described as a collection of distinct objects. So for example, I could consider the set of all coffee cups in my cupboard, or the set of all colors in the rainbow. The notion of what a set is seems pretty self-evident and was taken for granted for years before anyone questioned it. But in 1902, a mathematician and logician named Bertrand Russell discovered a paradox that pretty much blew everyone's minds. Now, as a side note, Russell probably wasn't the first person to recognize this paradox. A contemporary of Russell's named Ernst Zermelo discovered the exact same thing sometime between the years 1897 and 1902. For that reason, it's probably better called the russell zermelo paradox. The statement of the paradox goes like this. Consider the set of all sets who are not members of themselves. By a member here, we mean something that's in the set. Remember, a set is a collection of distinct objects. The question is, is that set a member of itself? What do you think? Take a moment to ponder it. Here's what Russell realized. Let's call the set S. So S is the set of all sets that aren't members of themselves. Suppose that S is a member of itself. So S is a member of the set of all sets that are not members of themselves. Okay, well that clearly can't be it. So S can't be a member of itself. Well, if S isn't a member of itself, but S is the set of all sets that are not members of themselves, then shouldn't it be a member of itself? Okay, okay. If this is making your head spin, that's pretty much what happened to mathematicians in 1902. There was clearly a problem with the definition of a set. Mathematics should be built on principles that aren't contradictory, and according to the law of excluded middle, you can't have something that's both true and false. I mean, what would you even call that? True? Trolls? Russell came up with a solution to his own paradox using something called the theory of types. Russell said, if you can arrange all possible statements into a hierarchy of types, then you could avoid the paradox by limiting your discussion to only objects at the same level in the hierarchy or of the same type. So for example, this set of all sets that don't contain themselves isn't actually a set. You could give it a new name, something like a class. So since the class of all sets that don't contain themselves isn't a set, it couldn't be a member of itself. There's no paradox anymore. In modern set theory, we get around this issue by redefining a set as a collection of distinct objects, none of which is the set itself. Now this is all well and good, but what about that law of excluded middle? It seems really self-evident, right? And that's what this whole argument comes down to. This idea of something can either be true or false but nothing in between. Is that statement itself true? Well, for the vast majority of logicians and mathematicians, it absolutely is. But there are a number of people called intuitionists that don't take the law of excluded middle for granted. This debate between the logicians and the intuitionists raged on from the 1800s to about the 1930s. From there on, the side of the intuitionists kind of weakened a little bit. And now pretty much everyone accepts the law of excluded middle as a reasonable axiom. So now you know what the Russell's or Malo paradox is. I hope you learned something today. In particular, I hope you see why mathematics is so formal, why we scrutinize every little detail to make sure we don't have paradoxes like this that make the whole house of cards we've built for ourselves 
just collapse in on itself. If you like this video, do me a favor, share it with two people you think would enjoy it and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more math content. I'm David Amos and I'll see you next time.